So today I've got an interesting clip of Michael Savage, who is a podcaster who's been around for a hell of a long time, and he's got quite a following, and uh, he's got an interesting concept. But before we get there, folks, I just wanted to show this to you. So take a look at this. Uh, this is a clip of Marjorie Taylor Greene, and she's talking to NBC's Vaughn Hilliard about eradicating Republicans who don't agree evidently with the, the Trump platform. So have a listen to this. Uh, this is a true change for the Republican Party. It says that not only do we support President Trump, we support his policies. And any Republican that isn't willing to adapt these policies, we are completely eradicating from the party. So it's up to Nikki Haley uh, what she does. I mean, that's that's uh, pretty harsh, isn't it? So any Republican that doesn't agree with policies, they're eradicating from the party. It sort of plays into that theme of a hostile takeover, folks, of the Republican Party. And this is a Trump operative. Remember, I played this one the other day. This is a Trump operative. Her name is Laura Loomer, and she's talking with Nick Fuentes, who is an avowed white nationalist, somebody who you do not want to have um, even close to government, right? <laughs> so here's what they said, folks. It's great to have you, and you've been really very special. So, folks, I mean, this is, this, this is, I don't think it's an innocuous thing to say, you know, we're just going to eradicate them. These people are serious. Um, they want to, instead of coming up with another party and just calling it something else, they're just, they're literally taking over the Republican Party, as we've seen for quite some time. And, you know, they've got the whole machine behind them, right? They've got the whole food chain of uh, misinformation. We're talking about Fox News and... You know, you've got Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, all these people to kind of reinforce the idea. But it's, it's a direction that is, is ant antithetical to democracy. And, and that's the problem with what they're trying to do. So that was today. Another thing that happened today is Michael Savage came out with this interesting idea, folks, that I want to play for you. And by the way, Michael Savage is evidently uh, in an argument with another conservative by the name of Dan Bongino. On Fox News, I guess. I don't know. I don't really watch Fox News. I'm assuming that's where Dan Bongino is out of. Shows you what I know about Dan. So evidently there's this argument going on where Michael Savage said, Deep State, evidently Dan Bongino, I'm assuming, called Michael Savage part of the Deep State, you know, and all that jazz. Well, he came back. Michael Savage said, The only well-distributed conservative radio talkers are, one, a former secret, secret service agent, and two, former Justice Department lawyer, and three, a narcissistic blowhard who wears a CIA pin and tells everyone how tough he is. Do the math. They rolled you. <laughs> Dan Bongino says, you're an effing, you're effing with the wrong guy, you piece of, etc. So it's nice to know that, you know, these people just, um, you know, they're, they're like minnows in a, in a pond. They, 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 they eat each other right? So that no one else gets the food. I don't know. It's odd. It's really, really odd. You don't see this going on in the Dep Democratic Party, independence. Um, and, and, and it's sort of this toxic masculinity or... I, I, I don't know. It's interesting to me to see this. But here's what Michael Savage said today. So he sent this out to all of his listeners, folks. Have a listen to this. Interesting idea. The subscribers received an email this morning entitled End Winner Take All. I'll read it to you. Michael says that our system of government is completely broken and we should consider going back to the original form where the winner of an election became president and the opposing candidate from the other party became vice president. What do you think? Hmm. You say, oh, that's crazy. It'll never work. It won't work. It did work. It was the original system of government in this nation. What kind of system do we have where it's winner take all? What kind of system is it where half the country feels vindicated, but the other half feels like they have no representation? This is true. And that's the way it goes on, back and forth and forth and back. Trump wins, so the other side hates the other half. Mm -hmm. Then Biden wins and we hate the other half. True. So this led me to some thoughts and questions. It's time to end the two-party system, number one. 
It's one of the most broken systems ever invented in the history of the world. It does not work, as we saw in 2016 with Trump versus Hillary. It left half the country crazed and angry. And now whoever wins the next election will leave the other half of the country crazed and angry. A very wise man wrote that in a book not seen on Fox News or reviewed by the New York Times, but perhaps the most brilliant political book of its time, my book. I've been at this a long time. So here's a thought for you. Make the winner of the presidential election the president and the loser the vice president. In that way, each side has a rep in the White House. This was the original system of government in this nation. You probably don't know that from listening to Sean Hannity. This was the original system of government in this nation. You probably don't know that from listening to Dan Bongo, the traffic lights <laughs> of uh, the right. They have the intelligence of traffic lights. They give you a red, a green, and a yellow. That's not what's necessary. You need some nuance, some knowledge, some history. True. That was the original system of government in this nation. And you know, folks, um, interesting concept. I think at the root of this, he feels like a lot of us feel in that America is suffering you know, with this flip-flop type of situation that we have where one party takes over and then, you know, the legislation tries to follow if it can, and then we flip the other way when the other party takes over. And, and that is damaging, you know, in a lot of respects. Um, the question that I've got here um, is, would Donald Trump, if, assuming that he would lose this election, do you think he would actually go along with being vice president? First of all, I, I mean, I'd love to hear what you think about that, Michael, but I don't think... Donald Trump would uh, would take VP. He would not. So we'd have to have, obviously, an alternate situation. But I found this, this article. This is from uh, the Smithsonian Magazine. And somebody asked the question, when did this end? And they said, that was in 1804 when the 12th Amendment of the Constitution was ratified. This is David Ward, senior historian at the National Portrait Gallery. The amendment was proposed after the 1796 election. After that election resulted in a president, John Adams, and vice president, Thomas Jefferson, from opposing parties, and the 1800 election led to a tie between Jefferson and Aaron Burr. They were members of the same party, Democratic, Republican, but it took the House of Representatives 36 contentious ballots to break the tie, electing Jefferson president and Aaron Burr vice president. In 1804, Jefferson was reelected and George Clinton became the first VP under the 12th Amendment. So, I mean, that, that whole thing, if you look into it, is, it's interesting and sad at the same time, that whole duel that Hamilton had with Aaron Burr. Evidently, it started with this whole thing with the 36 contentious ballots. So what happened was the Electoral College was tied. They, they resorted to the House of Representatives to try to figure out who was going to be vice president. And after 36 contentious ballots to break the tie, Hamilton evidently went around and really persuaded a lot of people. Um, and that's how Aaron Burr ended up being vice president. So there was some, obviously, some bad blood there. There was also some sort of a dinner party where Hamilton said some things that, that went through the grapevine and Aaron Burr heard. And then, you know, that just blew up from there. And so a, a duel was called, Hamilton agreed, and evidently in this duel, Hamilton shot above Aaron Burr, and Aaron Burr shot Hamilton in the stomach, and he died the next day. So, um, and, and Hamilton said, basically, look, I did not want to kill the man. And that was kind of something that they did back then with these duels. You know, the idea was that you would fire at the ground, and then the disagreement would be over. But in this case, obviously, that did not happen. So the question that I would have in a situation like this, if the vice president of the other, if the you know, contender in this case, let's say that Trump were to lose and he became vice president, would he still have the ability to cast the tie-breaking vote in the Senate? And um, I mean, it would be interesting, folks. It would be um, something to think about. I mean, how would this play out? It would certainly be colorful, wouldn't it? It would probably go something like this where Trump said, yeah, yeah, great, great one, Biden. I saw where you tripped the other day. Really nice, really nice. Biden would come back and say something like, what are you talking about? You can't even put two words together in a sentence. Donald Trump, he's like, you're, you're, you're embarrassing yourself every time you get behind the microphone. 
And then Trump would say, hey, listen, you know what? I took the cognitive test. And Biden would say, yeah, yeah, I heard you ace that test. Yeah, yeah, man, woman, child. Yep, I get it. But you know what? I think you cheated. I think you cheated. I mean, it would be colorful, folks. It would, it would be colorful. But I, it's something to think about, nonetheless. It's something to think about. What would life be like if we had a government that was run that way?